Join the coven. Alien Resistance. A story written by fellow narrator and talented award winning author, 13 Past Midnight. A link to his channel will be available in the description down below. So make sure after this video, you check out his channel and subscribe. I was camping near the river, and on the second night, I began to have strange and very disturbing dreams. By the third night, I was becoming more and more convinced that there was more than meets the eye going on. I decided to steel myself and prepare to fight back. I would resist the aliens. I refused to allow myself to be abducted. How do you fight against a foe that supposedly doesn't exist? I had read all the books about alien abduction, and one of the things that struck me as a constant through everyone's tale is that no one tried to fight back. There was my answer. If I flatly refused to be abducted, if I fought back tooth and nail, then maybe, just maybe, I could prevail against the alien threat. By refusing to make myself available, by refusing to go along like a sheep led to the slaughter for their nightmarish and horrific tests, then maybe I could get some peace and be left alone by the entities. I was prepared to fight when I finally laid down and allowed myself to drift off to sleep. I slept the tired but deep sleep of the righteously angry. Let them come, and try to start something with me. I dared them. It wasn't long before I felt the old familiar sting. I heard the tones and felt the paralysis begin to take hold. In my mind, the pep talk began. I don't have to accept this. I won't accept this. I refuse to accept this. Slowly, I felt their presence enter the area. As usual, there were three or four of them. Suddenly, I realized I wasn't paralyzed. I broke free and stood, although I found it somewhat disconcerting to find that I was no longer safe and secure in my room. I wasn't surprised. They had to take me elsewhere to do whatever it is they do. Tests, probing, experiments. I had faked the paralysis well, but now I had had enough as they approached on each flank. I sat up on the bed or table or whatever it was where they had me, and it startled them. I used this moment, this element of surprise as it were, to launch my attack. I grabbed the one nearest to me by his long slender neck and twisted for all I was worth. Incredibly, I felt the neck twist in my hands. It was very soft, like twigs covered in plush fabric, but smooth instead of furry or even scaly. There was a sickening crunch, and then the alien went limp. Its huge black eyes looked at me, unbelievingly, and then filmed over and closed. I couldn't help but notice it had two sets of eyelids, one on the bottom and one on the top. The other figures froze, and I hesitated and then dropped the dead one I was holding. Why did you do this? I heard in my head. What have you done? Go ahead, try me, I screamed, reaching off the next one nearest me, which skittered away just out of reach. I'll kill you. I'll kill all of you. They clearly weren't expecting this sudden turn of events. They all withdrew into a clump and stood close together, obviously deciding what to do next and how to handle this crazy earthling that had already killed one of their own and was threatening the rest with at least grievous bodily harm, if not certain death. They seemed to have elected one of them as a representative, and he slash she slash it 
Do they have a sex? Intersex? Approach me somewhat petuantly. As this one approached, the other two dragged the one I had killed out of the circular gray steel room. The representative stood looking at me, and I caught what I considered at the time to be a hint of pathos in those big black eyes. Again, I felt, more than heard, the words, What have you done? And why did you do this? How could you do this? Echo through my head and my psyche. At first, I did feel a tinge of remorse. But then my rage, my anger at being taken against my will, my rage at being violated resurfaced and bile and bitterness spewed forth. In my mind, I screamed at the creature. I called it every manner of obscenity I had ever heard before. It tried talking back, trying to tell me. But we have the right. But I wouldn't back down or let it force its thoughts into my brain. I wasn't about to back down now. You have no right, I screamed in my mind. What makes you think you have the right? Instead of responding or trying to argue, it suddenly began to slip backwards. It was if it was moving without moving, if you can imagine that. Then I realized that the alien wasn't moving, I was. I was slowly slipping backwards, and the sense of motion grew faster and faster. I hear a loud pop, and was then in complete darkness. I blinked a couple times, and then found myself, oddly enough, alone in my own bedroom. It was quiet. I could hear the night chirps of crickets outside. Had they given up on me? Had killing one of them been the last straw? Would they punish me? Or let me go? Perhaps find a more pliable and willing subject to cater to their probing and examination whims and desires? Whatever happened, it seems to have been the end of my alien abduction experiences. At least for now. I no longer dream of aliens, and I haven't had a night terror abduction experience in over three years. Sometimes, it's best to fight back. You never know what you are capable of until you have nothing left to lose.